Okay, this section we're going to talk about properties of logarithms. So here are all the different properties that are listed. So I'm going to go through one by one, and each one of these also has uh, examples to go with. Uh, the very first one, that's a B there. That's log base B. That means you can have any base that's there. If we have a 1 after it, automatically it's going to get 0 uh, for the answer. That comes from the previous section. We talked about the graphs, and when you look at the graph of the log, it crosses the x-axis at 1 comma 0. So that's actually where that point comes from. When you put a 1 in there, you get a 0 uh, for the y value. And this is also where we get that identity. Anything raised to the 0 power equals 1. It actually comes from that same point. If I change this from the log form to exponential, I have b to the 0 would equal 1. So that's why anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. It all comes from that graph of the log where it goes through 1, 0 as the x-intercept. So it doesn't matter what the base is here, as long as you put a 1 after it, it's going to be 0. A log with no number underneath it, remember that's a log, log base 10, that goes to 0 as well, log of 1. And then we have ln of 1, ln is a log base e. If I put a 1 in there, that also goes to 0. The next one is if the, the base matches the number that comes immediately afterwards, that whole identity goes to 1. So for instance, log 2 of 2 is 1. Uh, and the reason why that is, is because again, if I take this one, change it to exponential form, I would get 2 to the first power equals 2. And so two to, two to, uh, any number raised to a power of 1, you always get the same number you started with. So that's why that property also works. Likewise, if I have this, now a log with no number, that always has a base of 10. So that would be really a log base 10 of 10, that's 1. And then ln e, that would be the same as well because you have a log base e of e. These two numbers match, that's also equal to uh, 1. Next property, this part, the log, if it's part of an exponent and the base matches this one down below here, then the logs essentially cancel and you just get the number that comes after the log. So for this one, this one matches that one, those cancel and you just end up with the 5 that was originally there. This one, these two cancel, you get pi. Uh, next one. If I have log base b of v and I have an r that's there, that means that these two things are going to cancel out. Now the reason why that one works is because of the fifth rule that we'll talk about in a second. The fifth rule says that you're allowed to take the exponent part, bring it down in front, and you have this. So if we apply that rule to this one, the r would come down in front of that one, log base b of b is 1, and then you have 1 times r. So these two are kind of related to each other and that's why it works. So for number four, again, if you've got the base matches this one immediately afterwards, you just end up with the exponent part only, it's equal to seven. And then these two match, so you're equal to five. And again, this other one I just mentioned before, you're allowed to take the power and bring it down front, or you can go back the other way, and if it's down front, you can bring it back up to the top. So you can actually go either direction uh, with this one. So if you've got the eight that's up here, you can move it down in front and it basically turns into a multiplication. This would be eight times log base three of five. Then these two down here is what you're, these actually, this five, six, and seven are the ones you'll be doing the most work with because you'll be working with these uh, as far as with variables and we'll take a look at some examples a little bit later on. Um, but these two basically break up uh, as multiplication goes to addition and division turns into subtraction. Now. These two rules, they actually come from our exponent rules. So we talked about before properties of exponents. If you're uh, multiplying two things that have the same base, the rule was that you add the exponents. But we talked about that logs are actually a type of exponent, so that's why these properties actually hold true. So anytime you have two numbers multiplied inside the log, we're allowed to split them up and to do two separate logs. So for instance, log base two of three times five, I can write that as log base 2 of 3 plus log base 2 of 5. So you might be thinking, why do we have to break those up? Doesn't it make, doesn't it, make it more complicated by doing that? Well, it, it does make the answer longer, yes. However, uh, for those of you that might be going on the calculus, this is going to be an important rule later on because the calculus operations are easier to do with these logs separated instead of doing it all together. This might be a more complicated piece, but if I'm breaking them up into two different ones, that's going to be a lot easier uh, to deal with. Likewise, same holds true for number seven. Again, uh, having it together like this might be more complicated, but 
if I have the logs separated, it makes the calculus operations easier. So if you have division, then the logs you break up and it turns into subtraction here. So again, I have log 3, 24 over 6, and that turns into a subtraction. So these are the seven different properties of logarithms. The other examples we're going to do next, we're going to focus on using these properties of logarithms uh, to evaluate, and also we'll take a look at them for simplifying algebraic expressions.